96.024. It's been an exhausting but rewarding time for the Starship Enterprise. Meeting intelligent dinosaurs, fighting a super criminal, and defeating the Romulans has thrilled each and every one of us. But it has tired us out, too. So it is now a pleasure to comply with Starfleet Command's order to bring a new member of the Federation back to their home in the Gar system while giving them a tour of our mighty ship. The ambassadors from the planet Garus seem harmless enough. Their childlike sighs and innocent faces have charmed almost everyone. But sometimes they seem just a little too harmless. Come in. Oh, excuse me, Captain Kirk. Hello, Garus. Come in, come in. I did not know you were busy. I'm sorry. That's quite all right. I always have time for Garus's leading ambassador. We're part of the same brotherhood now. I could come back. No, really, it's all right. What can I do for you? Well, if you are absolutely sure I am not interrupting you. Really, Mr. Ambassador, it's no trouble. I'm at your service. Thank you, Captain Kirk. It is just that your fine Dr. McCoy has shown us the sick bay. Your fine Mr. Spock has shown us all your quarters and recreation areas. Your fine Mr. Scott has shown us the engine and the engineering room. Your fine Mr. Sewell has shown us your laboratories. And your fine Mr. Chekhov has shown us the transporter room. Excuse me, Mr. Ambassador. I'm not sure I understand. What is the problem? What have we done? It is you who must excuse me, Captain Kirk. I apologize for any and all confusion, but it is not what you have done that troubles us. It is what you have not done. I apologize for any oversight, Mr. Ambassador. Please tell me what we have missed so I may correct the situation. Thank you, Captain. We have seen and enjoyed all of your magnificent ship, except the computer. We find that these machine brains we will be thrilled and honored to see your advanced one. Well, that's all there is to it. I don't see why not. I shall arrange for you to see our computer right away. I would show it to you myself, but I have to plan our orbit around your planet. We will be arriving there quite soon. Quite all right, Captain. We understand and greatly apologize for the trouble we may have caused. Oh, we have noticed your lovely lieutenant, Uhura, often in the game room. She does not seem too busy. Could uh, she show us your computer? That's a very good idea, Mr. Ambassador. Lieutenant Uhura is not too involved with the approach of your planet, and I'm sure she would be delighted to show you around. Excellent. Captain Kirk, this is Mr. Spock. Please report to the bridge, sir. The planet Garus has just come into range. Captain Kirk, please report to the bridge. Oh, no. Does that mean we cannot see the computer? Don't worry, Mr. Ambassador. I'll have Lieutenant Uhura show it to you right away. I'll be right there, Mr. Spock. Oh, and Mr. Spock, please have Lieutenant Uhura report to the Garishan Ambassador's quarters immediately. There it is, Captain. The planet Garus. A large, lush planet with an almost equal amount of water space and land space. The Garusians will never run out of room or oceans. It's beautiful. That it is, Mr. Chekhov, that it is. Especially since it means we can get the ambassadors off our hands, finally. No, Captain, is there any way to talk about the members of the Federation? Now, Scotty, normally I would agree with you, but didn't you find the Garusians just a little hard to deal with? I don't know what you mean, sir. I know I did, Captain. Every time you talk to them, you find yourself either apologizing or forgiving them. Yes, Mr. Sulu. I, too, noticed how they made you humans feel guilty even when it was they who were begging forgiveness. Well, I don't know about any of you, but all I know is when I showed them I loved the engines, they couldn't stop complimenting her on the ship. It's good to have Federation members who finally know and love good engineers. <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder you like them, Mr. Scott. What the devil? Spock, where's that alarm coming from? The shuttlecraft hangar, Captain, in the rear of the ship. Tanker! Security Officer Tanker, report. Come in, Security Officer Tanker. Tanker here, Captain. What the thunder is going on, Frank? Oh, the shovel, Captain. It's gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone, gone? Gone, Mr. Scott. Disappeared. Taken off. It, it's not here anymore. I mean, Garrow's ambassadors have gone with it. What? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure, Captain. My men have searched every single deck. We've gone into every single nook and cranny. They are here. By all the stars in... O'Hara! Tanker! Is Lieutenant O'Hara there? She's... She's gone, too. <laughs> Jimmy can't do this. You'd be walking into a trap. You'd be killed. Bones, it is the only way. The Garusians are official members of the Federation now. We just can't go attacking them. The articles of the Federation forbid it. We don't know exactly what happened. Maybe they were all kidnapped by a saboteur or a stowaway. Sabotage or stowaway, my foot. Uhura was abducted by those aliens, and now you and just a small landing party are going down to investigate. It's foolish, Jim. It could be a suicide mission. Now, easy does it, Doctor. I left it to Spock and Ensign Sulu and check off with me. Mr. Scott will be here, ready to beam us up at any moment. And Mr. Tanker will be waiting with an entire squad of security officers in case we need help. So don't worry, Bones. We're ready, Captain. Very good, Spock. 
Kekar, Sulu, take your places in the transporter room. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, be careful, Jimmy. Good luck. Thanks, Bobby. See you soon. All right, Scotty, energize. Captain Kirk and his men appeared directly in the center of Gara's capital city. Standing before them was Garner, the president of the planet. He had been waiting for them since the Enterprise first went into orbit above the world. Welcome to Garus, my Federation brothers. Welcome to the capital city of Garton and its famous mile-long hall of worship. Thank you, Mr. President. I hope our work here will be as quick and harmless as possible. I, too, hope your mission leads with the best possible success, my friends. Please follow me into the mile-long hall of worship where we can talk to you. Would you look at this place, Chuck? It's so big, so rich. I can hardly believe my eyes. Yes, sir. It is incredible. It is even greater than the palace we have in Russia. Gentlemen, may I remind you as to our mission here? Better keep an eye out for Uhura rather than this overabundant wealth. As you can see, Captain Kirk, we have nothing to hide here in Dallas. Our riches, our wealth, our land, it is all here for Federation use. It is simply a matter of trade. You give us something, and we give you much more. We are not here for riches or real estate, Garmin. We are here to find our lieutenant, who has disappeared with your ambassador, Carters. They have taken an Enterprise shuttlecraft with them, and we need to find it. Please, 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 Captain Kirk, do not trouble yourself. I am sure it is all just a great mistake. I am sure Carters and your Uhura are all right. They will turn up, I am sure of it. Please, accept my apologies for any trouble, and come join me in the Hall of Worship main room. This is incredible. In all the worlds we've visited, this is the most beautiful mansion I've ever seen. Yes, it is. It is breathtaking. Control your emotional outbursts, Ensigns. Be on your guard. The greed in your hearts may overcome the common sense in your brains. Please, Mr. Spock, your room is here to enjoy. That is why it was built. You are free to enjoy it, my friends. It is just a small token of our belief and worship to our almighty master. Enough of the tour, Carmen, and enough of this talk of your master. Now I know the truth about you and your hall of worship. I know that you have our lieutenant here, and I want her back now. Captain Kirk, how, how did you know? How did you find out? You apologized just a while ago, saying that you were sure Goddess and Uhura would show up. But I never told you our lieutenant's name. How did you know her name was Uhura? You are very clever, Captain Kirk, but it is too late. Your Uhura is with the master now. You will never get her back. We'll see about that, Mr. President. As members of the Federation, you are now ruled under our law. We'll see how the Federation punishes. Scotty, beam down the secure. For the Russians, stop them, capture them. Captain, look out. Suddenly, from every direction, dozens of little Russians come running. Without a word, they brutally attack the Enterprise crew. Leaping up into the air with incredible strength, they kick Sulu and check off into unconsciousness. One quick kick knocks the communicators from the captains and Spock's hands. Kirk and his science officer are now helpless and completely alone. Quick, Spock, this way. After them, don't let them get away. Spock, are you all right? Yes, Captain, I think so. How long can we hide? Given the size of this mile-long hall of worship, it is quite possible that we can remain hidden until Mr. Tucker sends down the search party. But by then, it might be too late for our ensigns. Yes, and Garmin said something about Uhura being with the Master. What do you think that means? I cannot be sure, Captain, but I can give you odds it is not very good. I agree, Mr. Spock. We had better do something, and fast. Come this way, Captain. I think I see a way out. That door. But this door is six feet of solid steel closed with a combination lock. How can we open it without phasers? Captain, please. The Vulcan race is known for more than our mind locks and nerve pinches. When my race is faced with a problem, we pride ourselves on solving it. You mean you are going to pick the lock? A crude way of putting it, Captain. I prefer the idea that I'm going to discover the necessary secret to unlock the door. Whatever you say, Mr. Spock, get going. Just a little more. A turn to the right. You can hear the tumblers. And a little pressure to the left. There. Quick, inside, Spock. I hear someone coming. 
Help me close the door, Captain. It is very heavy. This one. This isn't a way out. It's an entrance. Yes, Captain, and to the greatest array of scientific equipment I have ever seen. There are rows and rows of incredibly complex computers, and the entire wall is covered with sensors and view screens showing every corner of the Garden City. Spock, look at that view screen there. Isn't that Ambassador Gartis? Yes, Captain, it is. But what is he doing in that ceremonial room? It looks like a religious ceremony of some kind. It is. It must be. And look behind him. Why, that is our ensigns and Lieutenant Uhura. Spock, find a way to get sound with that picture. And hurry. There it is. Look, there's Chekhov. And Sulu. And so it is that we give these three people to the Gauris Master. Their very souls will be locked with his for eternity. An eternity of good, of war, of never-ending happiness. For joining with the Master to make our planet a better place is the greatest award Earthlings can receive. I'd like to give you something else, you rotten bunch of kidnappers. Just let me go for one second and you'll see what we are. Silence. You two men shall be trained in the ways of the Master. Then you two will be sacrificed to it. But the woman, Yuhura, has already proven her worth. Take her away and give her to the Master. No, let me go. No, you can't. You mustn't. Help me. Help. Oh, what? It's too late, Chekhov. She's gone. Who knows where they are taking her now? Or what they are doing to her? You lousy killers. What will you do with her? You shall find out only too soon, my human friends. Soon it will be your turn to join the Master. But for now, you must be prepared. Fellow take it away! Not so fast, Gardas. Captain Kirk, how did you find us? Your own computer showed us the way, Gardas. All Mr. Spock had to do was ask it for directions, and like a good machine, it gave them to us. All we had to do was discover your program, and just like a robot, we could control it. Well, now that you have discovered us, you shall never escape. Fellow illusions! Do not be so hasty, Mr. Ambassador. I also took the liberty of switching a few wires around. If you try to take us prisoner as well, I will be forced to make the computer explode. No, you cannot. You must not. It is the Master. If you destroy the Master, the entire planet will be at your mercy. I thought so. From the moment I saw that gigantic computer, I knew you were worshipping it as a god. But I never imagined you would actually sacrifice people to it like savages. But we do not, Captain Kirk. We, we just train smart people to run it for us. The last of our high priests has just passed on, and our religion forbids our touching the master. We had to find non-worshippers to work the gigantic deity, or our entire society would collapse. Gargis, Garmin, you fool. Why didn't you just ask us? As members of the Federation, we would have been happy to supply you with programmers and brilliant computer men. Do you not understand, Captain Kirk? The master is our god. It is forbidden by our queen to speak of him to any but those of the Garmin's race. Even now we are committing almost unspeakable heresy and sacrilege. If the rest of our people ever found out, why, they might tear us apart. I see. A rather difficult problem. But one I think we can solve. Mr. President, Mr. Ambassador, if you will kindly return our captured crew members, I think the Federation can take care of all your problems. With pleasure, Captain Kirk. So they were just trying to find computer workers here. That's right, Bones. They wanted to ask us, but the rules of their religion forbade them. So they thought they had to abduct who they needed. After Uhura originally showed how much she knew about our own computer, they thought she would be perfect. What happens now? Well, Doctor, the Federation Science Base Gamma 3 is even now setting up a satellite which will relay peaceful programming from Starfleet Central Computer. With this new information, I feel certain Garus faces a long and comfortable existence. Well, how long before the satellite work is finished? I'm not sure, Bones. Lieutenant Uhura, would you like to check the computer to find out? If you don't mind, Captain, I think I've had just about enough computer work for one day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right, Lieutenant. What could I be thinking of? Man your stations, everyone. Let's go home.